that introduction, Kathleen, and great to see all of you. Mabuhai again. It is so fantastic to be here in Manila. Now, of course, you don't need me to tell you that 2020 and 2021 were really very challenging years for your industry. You all know this. This is the reason why we're here. Of course, we know 62 million jobs were lost, a devastating loss of livelihood for so many people around the world over that time. And of course, we saw furlough schemes, subsidies, and other support measures from governments around the world to respond to the volatile nature of the pandemic and its many, many variants. And as you heard Kathleen say there, uh, many COVID-19 related policies were implemented with the expectation that the crisis would be over in a few short months. And yet we know it persisted. It went on and on. So really, we're looking at what should be prioritized in terms of financing the sector's recovery in this session. So please join me in welcoming Elena Contura, the Committee on Transport and Tourism from the European Parliament. Please join me here on stage. And we've also got Beth Potter, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada. And Ashok Lavasa, the Vice President for the Private Sector Operations and Public-Private Partnerships, something we've been talking a lot about here, from the Asian Development Bank. Welcome to all of you. Great to see you. I'll wait for you all to take your seats. Excellent. Thank you. Well, we've got 25 minutes for this session, so not very much time at all, and amazing expertise from all three of you, so I do want to get right to it. So, from your experience, what would you say were the, the key areas for financial support as the sector looks to recover? Let's start with you, Ashok. Uh, thank you. I think as far as uh, the tourism industry and travel industry is concerned, the, there are three elements that I would like to focus on, which is what the Asian Development Bank also looked at. In the sense that in the beginning, as you said, and as everyone recognizes that people thought this was going to be short-lived, but then it was realized that the industry would need support, tax relief, or other kinds of sustainable support. So the Asian Development Bank put together a 20 billion package to support governments uh, who might like to uh, provide this assistance to different categories of industry. But as the pandemic prolonged and it was realized that the vaccination is very important, and without the vaccination, things will not open up. So in the second stage, the ADB put together a package of $9 billion provided to different countries in order to access vaccines. And in the third stage, we are looking at specific requirements of industries, whether they are the airways or there are other financial institutions which are providing money to the uh, various categories of industry. So I would say that these are the three elements which uh, are important as we look at this pandemic and the recovery. Absolutely. I mean, you're talking about the crucial areas that require support, vaccinations being really very, very important. Now, Beth, it's really interesting because you represent sort of the private sector for many uh, Canadian companies. So what did you see uh, that was needed desperately at that time? Well, first of all, thanks for having us here. It's great to have Canada on the stage. Um, we saw a huge need for uh, support for private companies that um, allowed them to continue to keep their employees engaged, so wage subsidies, but also that uh, the overhead costs, the, the ongoing, whether it was rent or mortgage payments, the ongoing fixed overhead costs uh, really were uh, something that the businesses needed an opportunity to, uh, to continue to cover. So, you know, when we looked at um, the impact of the pandemic on businesses and, and on international rivals. I mean, we were down 86% on international rivals two years in a row. We had businesses who just did not have the opportunity to get um, any kind of revenue coming in or even enough revenue to, to really hold them through. So working with government, we were able to um, get a 
you know, once kind of the main subsidies were coming to an end, we were able to um, encourage government to implement um, sector-specific support for the hardest hit sectors, uh, you know, including uh, travel, tourism, hospitality, to ensure that, that those businesses were, you know, um, continue to be supported as we got closer to shore. I would love to hear more about that, that sector-specific support. We'll get into that a little bit uh, later. But Elena, uh, obviously from the EU perspective, uh, there were a lot of demands for what you could do to help support the industry. Which areas and specifically needed the most priority, do you think? Well, uh, the, pandem uh, the pandemic has changed the way we travel uh, and the way we live. So um, we need to work all together. So from um, uh, the European Parliament, that uh, is the institute that is elected from the people, the demand uh, was uh, huge. And as you understand, we had to uh, take care about uh, countries, 27 countries, member states, but also private sector. So we have to work all together. And uh, the European Parliament took this uh, incredible, historic, I would say, initiative. Why? Because it's the first global tourist destination. 10% of the GDP of Europe depends on tourism. And it's uh, more than 27 million jobs uh, directly and indirectly in this sector. And it's not only tourism, you have to think that uh, transportation also was hit it very much, so it's a combination. Uh, and this was the reason that um, uh, in the European Parliament we did three resolutions and uh, we demand for bold policies to make sure that we will protect uh, first of all, the private sector, but the public sector as well. So the next generation EU Europe's recovery plan, including the recovery and resilience facility, uh, finance reforms and investments by the private and public sector till the 2026. And this is very, very important because like this we support not only uh, the tourist uh, big uh, sector chains of hotels, but also the medium, the small medium um, uh, yeah. businesses that everybody says that is the backbone yeah. of uh, the economy. And we have to think that except the pandemic that is still here, but we want to look in the future and feel more, uh, how can I say, optimist that things will go uh, in a better way yeah. soon. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, we had the hit of the Ukrainian war. Yes. So we see prices to raise of course, in yes. fuels, energy, goods. So we have to be very cautious also for that. Yes. So what the, the European Parliament says to the countries, make your plan, your um, economic uh, actions, uh, work with the private sector, right. make sure that you will understand the needs and uh, provide the money and the funding Absolutely. where they need. Yes. So understand. this is the most important thing. Absolutely. I mean, so many demands. So it's such a, a struggle and a challenge to work out where the funding should go. And as you say, uh, yet more uncertainty brought on by, you know, the war in Ukraine, for instance. So we'll hopefully we'll get into that as well in the conversation. We only have 15 minutes. So, you know, we mentioned the extended nature of this crisis. Uh, interesting, Elena, you said that some of the sport's going to go on till 2026. That's very generous of the EU. But that extended nature of the crisis surely must make it incredibly challenging for governments, for uh, loan distributors like the uh, ADB, for instance. So uh, from a policy perspective, uh, what should be prioritized in financing the sector's recovery? Um, let's start with you, Beth, because obviously you've got a, a very uh, innate uh, ability to understand the needs of many of the people who use sport. Yeah, so we've been working with our federal government on uh, helping them to understand the situation that businesses are in um, and that, you know, going forward, we're going to continue to need investment in the industry. 
industry, whether it's um, supporting businesses as they uh, manage the massive amount of debt that they've taken on during the last uh, two years, um, or you know, in, in investing in the infrastructure and investing in um, sustainable practices, investing in technology, um, investing in ways in which they can improve and increase their workforce. So it's a, it's a very different conversation than we've had in the past because the conversation has very much been around how do we promote our destination um, as you know, a, a destination of choice and now we're saying we are going to be much more selective in how we promote but we need the infrastructure investment now so that we can, when we do get those visitors coming back to the country, we can deliver on their expectations, which we've already heard from other panelists. Yeah. They've changed. The expectations yeah. have changed and we need, to, we need to change with them in order to uh, continue to, to provide them with the experiences that they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, and Ashok, uh, I know obviously the ADB is uh, an, an incredible lender, mostly for infrastructure projects and, and other things. So give us a sense of you know, the kind of demands that have been on the ADB to fund projects, uh, and particularly uh, travel and tourism related projects, with, with sort of the goalposts changing all the time because we know this crisis has been extended. Uh, I think uh, there are three types of challenges when it comes to funding. As I said, in the first phase, the challenge was that how do you let the business sustain itself? So many of these uh, businesses, whether they were travel or uh, other forms of businesses, uh, supply chains, they wanted the wherewithal by which they could sustain themselves. So liquidity support uh, was provided in order to re make them remain afloat. The second challenge, I think, is now to recover. How do you recover? And uh, in this case, I would uh, give an example of uh, the ADB providing uh, the first time a funding to an airlines. All right, Fiji so, so The Fiji Airways was given a 60 million support, 65 million support, with the help of our co-financers. And I think being one of the uh, arteries of uh, travel to the Pacific Islands, that served them very well to uh, maintain their fixed costs during that difficult period. And the third stage, of course, is now when you reimagine the industry. Everybody has talked about, yes, you revive, but you also not only rediscover, you reinvent yourself. So how do you make the industry sustainable? How do you retrofit climate-friendly uh, technologies? Or in terms of the additional demands of the digitization of industry, are there going to be areas where digitization is desirable, but the infrastructure doesn't exist? So that is an area where the bank looks at providing funding to those who can create the digital infrastructure or for that matter any other form of infrastructure which is required to connect the tourist places with the market. Yeah, yeah. You, you anticipated my next question, but I will come back to this, this notion of digitization and sustainability. Now, uh, Elena, as you mentioned, uh, the EU has been incredibly generous. Uh, some of that support measure is going on to 2026, but surely that must put a lot of strain on, on government budgets. Yes, well, you see, in the European Parliament, we need to focus also uh, in the future. So we have to... Uh, you know, the new Green Deal uh, also uh, program and the technology, as was mentioned, so both they have to progress the same way. So, uh, for transport and tourism, especially, that was uh, the sector that was hit stronger than any other sectors, but at the same time has the power to, uh, gr for growth, uh, uh, the local um, economies and uh, communities uh, and is also the driving force, I would say, for other sectors uh, to uh, uh, grow uh, economically. Don't forget the entertainment, uh, the restaurants, uh, the, even uh, the goods that we buy. Uh, I mentioned yesterday in another panel, the ministerial panel, that there are countries that the whole economy depends of uh, uh, 
tourism because the tourists, when they go uh, in a country, they buy things sure. like France, like this industry of fashion. I mean, are the tourists that they consume a lot. So there are so many things that we have to think for the future, and we have to help the um, small and medium businesses because uh, they have accumulation of costs and, and they need uh, to uh, survive because uh, the truth is that in the last three years they're in survival mode, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So we need to see uh, what is going to be uh, and push for more bold politics and also it's very important the countries when they make their action plan as I mentioned before to give the money where they need to be for infrastructure for example or to do uh, new uh, investments for um, uh, what what actually uh, its country needs is different. For example, I'm coming from Greece. Right. Greece is the Polynesian of uh, Europe. It's the vacation that Europe, uh, I hope, uh, has as a first choice yes. uh, for vacation <laughs> yeah. to come and has so much to offer. The culture, the beautiful beaches, the weather, but all the gastronomy, there are so many varieties. So it's important to see uh, and also, I have to mention, is our 20% of our GDP. So it's huge for it's us. It's enormous, yes. It's enormous. And there are yeah. countries like Spain, Italy, Malta, Cyprus also as well right. that uh, the Mediterranean countries yes. that uh, tourism is important. So another thing and the last thing I want to say mm. is the, um, it's very important to be all together on this. Uh, the crisis is in, uh, is huge, so we cannot uh, uh, confront this crisis alone. We Absolutely. need to work together. Yeah. And we ask for a crisis management mechanism. Why? Mm. Because if you think all over the world, we have extreme weather conditions, we have uh, uh, problems with safety and security right. in some countries. We have also the climate change. Now, the pandemic, uh, unfortunately, this war that creates the humanitarian crisis and right. also uh, rises all the prices and everything is so expensive. So yes. if we see it in a global way, we need to be all together, uh, be ready. Right. Have uh, uh, yeah. our, you know, um, uh, the need way to be poised to be ready to deal with anything unexpected, as you said. Exactly. We have five minutes, so honestly, we're okay. running out of time here. We need to get on with the other issues, but I mean, those are big, big issues you just mentioned. There's so many things to think about, so many challenges. But I was really fascinated because a very interesting observation we had yesterday at the Global Leaders Dialogue from the CEO of the Saudi Tourism Authority is that travel and the industry shouldn't go back to the way it was. It shouldn't go back to the unsustainable practices that we saw uh, from many, many operators. So should government incentives or any kind of funding come perhaps with strings attached for the industry to move forward, to make improvements, to become more sustainable. And that's really interesting because a lot of ADB projects, I, I happen to know, come with those kind of strings attached, don't they? Well, uh, you might call it strings attached, but I think institutions like the Asian Development Bank, we look at more the development impact that any financing will create. And to, the, to that extent, all those strings attached are a step in the direction of reforming the way we do things, uh, improving the concerns that we have for environment. So let me give you uh, an example. For, we are right now uh, considering a loan by which we can reach the small and medium industries. Uh, we just heard that uh, so much impact has been caused. And in Asia and the Pacific, I think 60% of the job losses have happened in this area. And 80% of the contribution to tourism in Asia and Pacific comes from small and medium industries. So through the Bank of Maldives, we are trying, we are putting together a package with co-financers and with the Canadian Climate Change Facility Fund 
where we can reach the small and medium industries. 60% of the fund will go to the small and medium industries, 10% to the women entrepreneurs. So this is one example, and the other clearly is the theme of climate change that we've talked about. ADB has just announced its ambition to go up from $80 billion to $100 billion of climate financing up to 2030, 75% of that would be towards mitigation and adaptation. Right. And I think yes. tourism industry uh, is going to uh, benefit by reorienting itself mm -hmm. and removing some of the perceived tension between tourism and ecology. Uh, Elena, I'm going to go to you next because just interesting, uh, you know, you, you say that the EU Parliament, they've been incredibly uh, generous, but surely that generosity comes with, uh, with stipulations of perhaps making the businesses better, making them improve. So have you seen that briefly? Well, actually, yes. We have to improve the way um, uh, the private and the public sector work together, first of all, and also the private sector needs to um, follow um, the um, demand because uh, it's very important as well to think that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's um, how can I say, um, uh, funding has to be in the way that in the future everybody will be able to uh, benefit. Mm -hmm. And um, for us in the European Parliament, it, it's important, not the huge sector of uh, hospitalization or transportation, because we don't have to forget the transport as well, which is uh, a big uh, part of uh, people going around. Uh, and the transfer where we have to go, uh, that was hit as well. We need um, to make sure that uh, the private sector uh, will also uh, be helped in the small uh, and uh, medium uh, businesses because it's very important to think that um, uh, all over the world now with the sustainability and with the Green Deal and with the digitalization, everybody wants uh, uh, biomatic experiences. Yeah. So it's a model that changed and we will travel in a different way. We will actually ask for different uh, things to experience. So yes. this is another very important uh, thing that we should uh, see. And yes. European Parliament, I close with this, yeah. uh, covers, try to cover all the needs. Excellent, excellent. A struggle though, but yes, great that it's trying to do that. Beth, I think you get the last word here. So in terms of your association, uh, is there certain, um, you know, sectors that are getting priority because they are making improvements? Yes, there are, um, and and the other thing I think that's really important is that um, we've been able to, to demonstrate to our government that the investment in training for the SMEs is really important. You know, it's very difficult for you know a small business who doesn't have an HR department, who doesn't have a sustainability officer, you know, to understand how they can make changes within their business so that they are meeting the requirements of the SDGs, as an example. So training them, helping them understand what works within their sector, within their business, um, and that will have an impact, and to show them how that impact can, can actually come to reality um, will be incredibly important for us as we go forward. So our government has um, certainly come to the table. We, we are uh, in this fiscal, there's um, three quarters of a billion dollars uh, on the table for investment into new practices, training, um, and hoping to address um, uh, the, the, the demands that the visitor is looking for, but the demand that all of us are looking for as citizens of the world. You know, tourism is a global sport, as I yeah. say. So we want to make sure that um, what Canada is providing uh, is in line with the global traveler's ex yeah. expectation. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, well said, all of you. I did say 25 minutes was going to be a massive struggle to squeeze all of this expertise in, and indeed our time is up. But you gave us so much to think about there. Uh, the need for funding uh, towards uh, recovery in the sector is absolutely pivotal. Uh, it is happening. It's good to know that governments are giving the support, multilateral development banks like the ADB, are giving the support but you know it is absolutely 
imperative that support continues uh, during this incredibly unpredictable period of volatility with the pandemic, with wars and everything else that we're all worried about. So thank you once again. A big round of applause for our amazing panelists, Elena Contura, Beth Potter and Ashok Lavazza. It was great to speak to all of you. Thank and you. thank you all to the audience. Thank you. Thank you to Sharon Jeet uh, Leal for a wonderful uh, moderation there. Thank you, all of you.